Hey there, YouTube. How's she going, boys? Welcome to another episode of Three Toe Customs. I'm Three Toe Joe, your host at the most. If you didn't know, well, now you know. <laughs> well, you know how she goes. You know, a machine's only brand new for so long, and after a while, things start wearing out. You need to replace some parts. That's just the nature of the game, and that's exactly what we're going to be up to today. That's right, uh, I'm getting due to change my front brake pads here on my 2019 Razor 900S. Got about 6,000 kilometers on them. They've been pretty squishy for a while. I don't have many brakes left, so it's definitely time to change the brake pads before we start having issues with the calipers. So what we're going to be showing you today is how to inspect your brake pads, um, how to change your brake pads if need be, and also how to adjust your brake calipers to get the longest life possible out of your brake pads. So if that's something that interests you, well then grab your tools and follow along. Oh, and remember, while the intro is playing, it never hurts to take a second to smash those subscribe and notification buttons. It really goes a long way towards helping me build my channel, eh, Bice? So before we get right into changing our brake pads, maybe we'll just take a second here and we'll talk about brake pads. Um, so what I got here today is I got Super ATV Sintered Pads. Um, I've heard, heard decent things about them. Uh, personally, I don't know how long they last. Uh, through the years, I've grown the Razor 800 for about five years and now I'm two years on my Razor 900. And what I've always found is OEM pads seem to last the longest. You know, makes sense, right? Actually, OEM pads from players are actually pretty decent. Um, now, you go on Amazon and eBay, and you'll see all these really cheap, no-name pads, you know, $20 a set, $30 a set. And you might think, ah, oh, I'm going to save a few bucks, and that's going to be a good deal. But, I mean, are you really saving? I've tried these cheap pads and got maybe four or five rides out of them. Didn't last very long at all before I had to change them back out again. So, I mean, when you take the, into consideration the time it takes you to change the pads, plus what they cost, and if you got to change them three times as often as you do the OEM pads, you're really not saving any money, and you're definitely not saving any time. Um, so, yeah, like I said, uh, a good alternative for brake pads that I found that actually seemed to last, you know, a decent fair amount of time that I've personally tried are the EVC brakes. Uh, I believe it was the EVC Severe Duties that I had on the front of my Razor 800. They didn't last quite as long as OEM, but they held up pretty good and they did last a good long time for me. And I mean, if you've watched any of my other videos, you notice, you'll notice that I'm pretty hard on the throttle and sometimes I have to brake pretty hard. So having good brakes is a must for me. But uh, right now, my brake pads in the front of my razor are pretty low. I don't have much left for brakes. So we're definitely going to go ahead. We're going to pop those off and be changing those out with these Super ATV centered pads and We'll see what kind of luck we have and how long they last. <laughs> so let's get right into our bikes. All right, so now that you got your machine all jacked up, your wheels off, first things first is the visual inspection, of course. Uh, what you're going to be looking for is basically, you, you should be able to tell here, I'll bring you guys in in a second here, but you should be able to tell how much brake pad you have left, which you'll see in a second. Mine, I really have none. And you want to inspect your brake rotor too at the same time, make sure to see if there's any deep gouges or any matures surface damage going on there if, if there is you probably want to replace your brake rotor but mine looks still pretty good so i'll bring you guys in so you guys can have a look all right so when you get in closely here you can see where your pad bracket is um you should have a gap in between there and your brake rotor we'll show you on the other side where i already changed the pads but uh basically you can tell i have no pads left whatsoever so uh we'll just go to the other side and show you what that looks like see if you look on this side here where i already changed the pads Hey, there's tons of gap. You can see the pad in there. So if your pads look like that, they're probably good. Maybe just take a second and adjust your pads, which we'll show you guys that in a, in a minute after we get the other pads changed out here. Okay, so first things first when you get here is you want to remove this here, little plastic shield here. That's in your way of getting at everything. Uh, it's kind of in the way of your mounting bolts and your, your adjusting screw. So you want to get go ahead and get rid of those. Uh, the proper size torques for that is a T30. 
Yeah, I just like to use my trusty little impact gun here. Make sure it's set the right way. Makes quick work of things. Yeah, just go ahead and set this somewhere safe. Don't lose your screws and get right on to her. Okay, so before you go and you remove your caliper, what you want to do is you want to you want to release your, your cylinders to make room for your new pads. Um, you can do it after you remove the caliper. I've seen people use C clamps and stuff like that, but all I like to do is I like to get a nice big flathead screwdriver like this. And then I'll get it on the side of the pad that's on the side of the cylinders. And I'll just give it a little pry over. You're not going to hurt the rotor. And once you're in there, you can get right in there. And they push out pretty easily. I never had too much trouble. This is how I do uh, pretty much all the vehicle, any vehicle. I always just do it like this to, to release the, the cylinders first. Yeah, it helps to remove the... So now that we got our, our, our cylinders all pushed in, you see our pad here is nice and loose. Now we go ahead and remove our caliper. And uh, and before you remove your caliper, it's always easier to do this at the same time too, is you have a little adjustment screw right back here in the top part of your, on your top slider. And it's a five millimeter Allen head. So what you want to do is you just want to go ahead and you just want to back that off about, you know, three, four turns. So. What this will do is, uh, oh, I went a little too far. What this will do is will allow you to uh, separate, to remove your pads from the caliper itself. Okay, so to remove the caliper from the machine, what you're gonna need is a 15 millimeter socket for the uh, Razor 900 here. Different razors might be different sizes, but you guys should be able to figure that out, no problem. And uh, just to mention that this procedure is basically the same as any Polaris razor out there. So they're pretty much all the same. They all have the same style of brakes. So this video should be good for just about any Polaris razor. You're going to want to go ahead and remove these completely. Yeah. I like to work outside just because uh, it gives me lots of room in the shed. I'm a little limited, so but when I work outside, I got tons of room to do what I need. There we go. Copper is removed. Okay, so to remove your pads from your caliper bracket, as you can see, some, when you get there, you, you're like, man, how's this going to work, right? So what you do is you take your finger, your thumb or whatever, and you pull back on your bracket like this as hard as you can. And then it should give you just enough room to, to get your, your piece out here. And then you go over on the other side, you do the same thing. Man, your pads will slide. Well, usually relatively easy. Now oh, see there, you can see now I didn't have very much pad left on these guys at all, at all, at all. They were toast, toast, toast. So any longer, if I would have waited any longer, I would have started digging metal into the rotor and then I would have probably pushed out my cylinders too far and root the cylinders on them. Then it would have been time to either rebuild the caliper or replace them. All right, so now that you got those pads out of your way, now you're going to want to take uh, some brake cleaner and clean up around these cylinders and stuff a bit. While we're at that, something else you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to remove this completely. From the machine, you're going to want to clean up these sliders here and you're going to want to lubricate these a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, give her a little cleaning inside there with some brake cleaner off these old guys they didn't look too bad but what will happen is uh, over time dirt and mud 
we'll get in there and then that'll stop your brakes from working properly so we'll go ahead and we'll get these lubed up and put back in and we should be good to go so it doesn't take a lot of grease just a little you want to use a silicone grease you don't want to use just regular grease as uh stuff here is quite a bit thicker than, than just regular grease and uh dirt and stuff won't stick to it as well and that's it that's all you need to do just a little quick light lube and start putting her back together so again when you want to get these guys on i'm just going to go ahead and slide your bracket over and then you want to make sure that these rubbers here connect back into their spot on the seal you know grooves in there generally you can just push them on sometimes they're a little harder than others but all right so before we go and we reapply our caliper we're just going to give it a rotor a quick cleaning here Little brake cleaner always clean your brakes up while you're doing this makes a little bit of a difference there's my mud Now we reinstall our new pads. Now you always want to clean your brake pads off too, just before putting them in, just make sure there's no grease or contaminants on your pads. Now putting them on will be the same as just reverse uh, taking them off. You're just going to want to get them set in there, push your bracket over to one side, get one side in, come over on the other side. Generally, they go on real easy. <laughs> there we go. And then, uh, same thing for your next one. Just make sure you flip it around the other way. <laughs> bolt tools lined up. Get these going again. And uh, when you reinstall your caliper brackets, bolts, they're uh, 30 foot pounds. Okay, so what you want to do before you put your plastic bracket back on is you want to come in the machine, pump the brakes till they get hard, you know, so your, your calipers are all pushed out as far as they can onto the rotors. And then after that, what we'll do is we'll adjust the outer brake pad and we'll show you guys how to do that in just one sec here. Okay, so now that you have your calipers all compressed here, what you want to do is you just want to make sure that the brakes are releasing freely here. Oh, they're a little tight. So what you're looking for is your outer pad is the one that you set. Uh, that's the one that gets loose on you. And what you do to set that guy is just basically Seems like they're already pretty darn tight. Don't look like there's much for adjustment here. What you want to do basically is just take your your bolt. You want to tighten it in. Until you can't turn your rotor anymore pretty much. Now, 
Now what you're going to want to do is just take this and then set yourself up where you can get a good half turn and then you want to back it off about a half a turn. So basically what I like to do is just start either straight down or straight up. That way there I know half turn is 180 degrees through and then you see caliper releases again. A little bit of rubbing noise is pretty normal. That'll wear yourself out every time. So, and then basically now we're pretty much done. We just have to put our bracket back on and then we'll talk about burnishing the brakes. Burnishing, sorry. All right, so basically that's how you would adjust your brakes if uh, let's say your pads are still good but it's been a little while. This is something in your maintenance that you should be doing every so many hundred kilometers, I believe it is. You basically take your wheel off, inspect your, if you got a lot of play here in your front pad, you just want to go ahead on that little Allen nut bolt like I showed you, and you just want to tighten it up until it's tight up against the caliper, and then back it off a half turn, and that'll keep your brakes adjusted. And that's how you, you make sure that your brakes stay good for a really long time, because what'll happen is, is your, your rear pad, the one that's on the side where the caliper is, where the cylinders are it'll, it'll continuously push and you'll wear out one pad a lot faster and then what will happen is, is eventually by the time you notice you'll be pushing your bracket into your rotor and you'll be scraping things and it'll just be bad stuff so for for long life and even pad wear you want to make sure that you take and you adjust your brakes every so many hundred kilometers or miles depending where you are uh, getting, a, getting a manual for these machines is so important so important it gives you so much information in there on all your torque specs and your maintenance schedules and stuff like that it's really important to keep up with that stuff because if not that's when you start running into troubles so uh after you got all this done what you need to do is you need to burnish your brakes uh, basically what that means is you're going and you're setting your pads to your rotors without causing too much heat and wearing everything out prematurely and that's basically how you get even longer life out of your pads because without that, what'll happen is your pads don't have time to seat your brakes properly, and then if you, your rotors, I mean, and then what'll happen is you go out riding for a day, let's say, and then you're hard on the brakes, off and on, off and on, off and on, and uh, it just gets your pads hot, and then they wear on evenly, and then it just, uh, yeah, basically they they don't break properly like they should, and they cause uneven wear and premature wear, stuff like that. So it's important. So it's an important step. Basically, what you're doing to burnish your brakes is you're going to go out. You're if you're in Canada, let's say you're riding kilometers an hour, you're going to go about, I don't know, 60, 70 kilometers an hour. You're not going to slam on your brakes, but, you know, you're going to push them to stop the machine, you know, over a distance. Like, you know what I mean? You don't want to slam on, lock on the brakes. You just want to kind of gradually do that into them. And you don't want to do back to back to back to back because then your brakes will get hot and that'll just kind of defeat the purpose. So basically what you want to do is, I don't know, let's say on a one kilometer stretch maybe about a half a mile three quarters of a mile is you want to do it maybe twice let them cool off go and do it again do that about 10 times i know it, it's it's a daunting task but it'll really help your your pads last a bit longer and stuff like that and it'll seat them properly on your rotors so hopefully you guys didn't skip this step because it's really important to know that but uh, besides that that's all there is to it i mean really if i didn't have to video this I'd say maybe 20 minute job total, you know, it really doesn't take a long time to do this. And your, your rear pads are the exact same as the front and they're the same for every Polaris Razor out there that I've seen. They're all basically the same design. Hopefully this video helped you guys figure out, you know, how to do your own brakes and save you guys a few bucks from bringing it to a dealer or a bike shop or crazy prices, like $100 an hour or whatever they charge it is. <laughs> I know I can't afford that, so I got I learned how to do all this stuff myself. But I've been riding since 1985, and I've been working on my machines since I was a kid. So basically, every machine that I've owned, I've learned how to repair manuals and stuff like that through the years. And I get by very good with just repair manuals. I don't go on the internet a whole lot for information. Um, everything I need is in a maintenance book or repair manual, or even. Uh, my owner's manual for this machine comes with a lot of information, so basically that's all I really need to go by. Plus, uh, I had a Block 1 automotive technician course done, so uh, I understand mechanics quite well, and 
I know how to read wiring diagrams, stuff like that. So uh, basically, the internet sometimes I find what'll happen is you get a, a lot of mixed information, not always misinformation, but mixed information, you know, stuff like that. And people, you know, they forget to tell you some things, and, which I'm pretty sure I probably forgot something here too, but we weren't going too, too in depth into the braking system today. I just want to show you guys how to change your pads and give a quick inspection, stuff like that, and keep you guys going. So, uh, so uh, if you enjoyed the video, you know, give her a thumbs up, smash the subscribe notification button because I got a lot more of this stuff coming. And uh, and uh, remember, keep the shiny side up, all four on the floor, and we'll catch you on the flip side, hey, guys.